G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia and I thought I'd do something different. I'm going to do a deep dive. I haven't done this for a while, but first we'll start off with the markets and have a look at how we're going. So again, sort of Sunday lunchtime, so you know, midnight, sort of Saturday night, uh, you know, Sunday morning, whatever you want to call it, uh, over in the States. Now, the markets are all up a little bit green. We've had our traditional weekend pullback uh, and things are generally doing not too bad at the moment. And I suppose we're all just waiting to see what happens. Uh, and, you know, I'll probably follow up with that tomorrow. I expect it to kind of go up, but we're going to range around this kind of 19,000 to, you know, well, I'm going to say between 18,000 and 20,000 uh, for a while. I think it's just going to be, you know, the weak hands are going to be shaken out of the market. But gas prices, uh, still not great. But anyway, they've been a lot worse. Again, they're up around the 200, 300. BTC sitting around 61%. Uh, and the market cap back up around that $580 billion mark. You know, we're still a ways off that kind of $800 billion where we were a little while. The markets have uh, cooled off a little bit. But look, that's just the way it goes, uh, the up and down cycles. Let's have a look. Any big movers? Yep. Nexo, Sushi just continues to go from strength to strength. Uh, you know, I am kicking myself that I didn't get into it. But, you know, the issues that it had early on just put me off and you know all these kind of meme coins I guess you know sushi and all the rest of it I just I wasn't very trusting of them uh, and look you know from a fundamental point of view that was probably the right decision but from a monetary point of view then I obviously missed out on some gains but you can never pick them all Zilliqa nice they're doing pretty well uh, Aave bounce back nice status Elron so plenty of gains to be made there right now and again because we had that you know pullback on sort of Friday uh, that was, uh, you know, always going to sort of be the way, you know, you have a day or so where things, you know, cool off and then they rebound uh, fairly strongly after that. What about losers though? Do we have any big losers? Yep, NEM, obviously, that was always going to come down. It went on such a move. So, yeah, coming back down to 24 cents, not too bad. Probably uh, it'll come down a little bit lower as well would be my guess, but, you know, no guarantees. We'll have to wait and see. And look, everything else... Again, how many losers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven losers out of the top one hundred, and only one of them is over one percent. So <laughs> there you go. That's a pretty good day. And look, we're still waiting for you know sort of Monday in Australia to come and Sunday over in the states uh, before we really know exactly what the move of the market's going to be. All right, so the coin that I want to delve into, it's called P Network. All right, so this is this is a low kappa. Now I need to let you know I have not been paid for this. This isn't a sponsored review. This is just uh, me doing a bit of deep diving. Uh, I saw some things about it on Twitter, and some other people mentioned it on YouTube and things like that. And I was like, all right, I'll have a look. And Funnily enough, it was available uh, on my exchange of uh, choice, which is CoinSpot in Australia. So I was like, right, yeah, get into it. Here we can see it's got a market cap of, you know, only just 10 million. So this is a real low cap. So if this were to make a move, uh, you know, the upside uh, is immense. But look, it's a low capper. It is dangerous, you know, investing in these low caps. There's no guarantees of anything. They have no history. So just be careful. And again, this is not a uh, sponsored review. I don't, I mean, I've bought some tokens, uh, but I'm not being paid in any way, shape or form to do this review. So as we can see, let's go to the max here. It hasn't been out for that long. So only since July is when it sort of came out. Uh, and it started at 63 cents. So it had its pump and then obviously it's had its sell off. And this to me along here, this just looks like accumulation and now it's even starting to slowly make its way back up. So I mean, again, at the moment, if you were to buy it at, so 41 cents, for it to get back to its peak, it's basically going to sort of, well, 80 cents, you know, one and a half times its sort of self. Well, no, 40 cents uh, from 80 cents uh, is $1.20, so at least sort of double, uh, you know, your return at the moment. Now, that's if it does. There's no guarantees that it will. So, again, very low kappa. I think this is 
500 and something. 406, there we go. Rank 406. Now, what I did find interesting is when you look at this on coin market cap, it comes up as a lower rank and it comes up with a lower market cap as well. Uh, coin, uh, coin market cap says this is about an $8 million market cap. Uh, and CoinGecko says it's a $10 million market cap. And the rankings are different as well. I think it's 406 here on CoinGecko. And I think if I remember correctly, it was about 500 uh, and something on uh, coin market cap. So, you know, that's disturbing in itself that we've got two different uh, entities giving up, you know, two different prices. Who's to know which one's exactly correct? But I'm on CoinGecko for now. All right, let's go over and have a look at it compared to BTC. So again, it hasn't been out for that long. It came out in July. So it had its initial kind of spike, traveled sideways for a while, then it really hit its peak. And again, got up to here. So that's uh, 13,633 Satoshis. And then the sell off began. And now what we can see is it looks like it's kind of bottomed out. So it's flattened out. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely could go lower. That's a complete possibility. But it just looks like this might kind of be the bottom because this was just keep kind of rolling over and getting lower and lower. Other than this, there hasn't really been a whole lot of sort of, <coughs> excuse me, getting higher except for here. But again, this was the peak. This to me feels like a bit of a bottoming out uh, and an accumulation phase. So we can go just here. Look, with you know, you're hoping this is the low. Then it goes a little bit lower. But then the low goes a little bit higher. And now we're just waiting to see whether this is going to move uh, towards the upside. Who knows? And again, don't go investing everything in this. Uh, it's a low kappa, so the upside is quite large. But the reason the upside is quite large is because it's quite risky. So something to consider. Again, you know, there's, you know, when it started, so it had its initial pump, fell off. Looks like it's formed a bit of a bottoming pattern here. And look. This low is almost, you know, sort of this low here. They're very sort of similar. You know, if we were to get a horizontal line here, and we just do it from here, we can see this kind of feels like a bit of a bottoming here. No guarantees. Again, could go lower, but I think this is the bottom, and hopefully it'll start to make its way back up. And against this, again, sorry, this is against BTC. This is not against the dollar. So if this were to get back up to here in BTC terms, you know, who knows what that might be worth in the dollar term. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, chucked a few dollars on it uh, and we'll wait and see. Now, it's not just uh, simply because it's a low kappa and it looks like it's bottomed. We want to do a little bit of research. All right, so we go over to here. We can see P Network uh, over here on Twitter. Uh, and they've got a few people following them. So they've got over 6,000 people following them. And this is what their little kind of title says. The heartbeat of the heartbeat, heartbeat, <laughs> heartbeat of cross-chain DeFi composability. Any crypto asset, any blockchain secured by Maltese, MPC, and PNT. So that's their token. It's the PNT token. And look, we can see that they've got a number of tweets going on here for sort of quite some time. So they are active in the market. Uh, you know, they haven't kind of disappeared. Again, this was just back on December the first. Now, when we're looking at coins, these are some of the things we want to look at. It's not the be all and end all. It's not the only thing we're looking at, but they are active in the community at the moment. And look, you can go and check them on GitHub and things like that. Uh, see if they've got a Facebook site. But they're all the kind of things you want to see to make sure that they are still active in the community. But again, this is not the be all and end all to it. We need a little bit more. All right, let's go over to their site and have a look. So. Here we can see that they've got their site. Operators are valid. Uh, vote with PNT uh, within the DAO. It's a pretty nice sort of homepage. You know, there's no, look, there's not, you know, you need to be careful with homepages. They can look like a million bucks and it means they're absolute crap. And sometimes they can look like crap and they're still worth a million dollars. So these are some, you know, these are all things you need to take into a holistic kind of approach. They are active in the community. They're, you know, uh, you know, they're out there on Twitter. You know, they've got their own homepage. You know, it's got things like home, the network, the governance. Uh, and this is a project that they've got going. So steroids, here's the team. These are all the people that are in the team, which is nice. It's always a little bit 
of a worry when you know you can't find out anyone who's on the team it's all anonymous in that now this is uh, about decentralization and it doesn't have their actual faces and all the rest of it here but thomas uh bertani he's the project lead let's go over to here and here he is so p work uh, p network DeFi. here he is and he's been around since back in 2010 so there you go uh, he's you know he's followed by a few people and he's following a few people as well and we can see that he's uh, followed by uh, some other people that I'm sort of following as well so we have a face uh, we have someone who's been around since 2010 so uh, you know been around for a while and they're partnered up with I do uh, and look it's all looking pretty good at the moment but it doesn't tell us a whole lot about the token we want to know what is what is it all about what does it really do now you can go over to their uh, white page uh, and you know read all that stuff I found a pretty good a pretty good article here though so Telos partners with P network to bring liquidity to its DeFi ecosystem Telos, one of the most active blockchain platforms in the world not so sure about that I reckon there's a couple of other ones but you know that's their selling point has partnered with P network to bring liquidity to its DeFi ecosystem P network is the decentralized governance layer running P tokens a cross-chain system allowing assets to move freely between blockchains Telos now supports P, uh, P tokens P BTC connecting Bitcoin to Telos the token is pegged one to one to Bitcoin and is compatible with other DeFi networks, including Ethereum. So again, they're all about cross-chain compatibility and things like that. You know, there's Wrap Bitcoin, Synthetics Bitcoin. You know, there's all these other different kind of Bitcoins. Excuse me. And P Network have their own uh, P BTC, so that's good. Telos brings a number of leading features to the blockchain space, but until it has the ability to integrate with other chains financially. These won't reach their full potential impact, uh, says Douglas Horn, Telof Chief Architect. We embrace the trend of digital economies becoming more complex and interconnected. P Tokens has created a valuable frictionless and secure bridge between Bitcoin and Telos that opens new possibilities for users on each side, bringing free and instant transactions to BTC users and BTC payments as low as one Satoshi to Telos dApps and users. All right, so they've hooked up with the Bitcoin networks. Telos is in, and, you know, they're getting into part of the DeFi space and all the rest of it. So that's sounding pretty good. P tokens also represents a unique opportunity for DApps running on Telos. While decentralized finance grows, DApps remain restricted and siloed by blockchains. Again, there's not a lot of uh, cross -compat compatibility at the moment. It is slowly but surely happening but it, it, it's not there yet. So, you know, they're looking at that and that's good because cross compatibility is what we need. And look, everything connects back to Ethereum at the moment. And like I said, they're already con are connected back to Ethereum. P tokens helps tell us expand to new valuable chains by enabling cross chain composability between systems of different block on different blockchains. As Telos holds steady as one of the most popular DApp platforms in the world, P tokens allow developers to connect their features with other chains. Several apps running on Telos include uh, Zeptogram, that's music, uh, Farm Game, that's esports, uh, Unbiased is AI Marketplace, and Telos Task, a gig uh, economy platform. Now, I have expressed interest in integrating PP, PBTC and future P tokens into their applications. So they're active amongst the community, you know, they've got their internet, uh, you know, like Twitter going, uh, you know, GitHub and all the rest of it. So this is sounding uh, like it's something legit. And again, we can put faces to it. It's not an anonymous team. Not that anonymous teams mean it's bad, i.e., you know, we've got Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not bad and we don't really know who did that. So it's all sounding good. Now, I did some uh, deep diving uh, into some articles that I found about them. So I do to burn 80% of companies' token holdings to kickstart one of the biggest DAOs in DeFi. So this is back in June the 4th, Switzerland, 4th of June 2020. 
Swiss-based crypto platform IDU is upgrading its native utility token into a governance token that will power a new cross-chain DAO. In a collaborative decision by IDU and P-Tokens, the IDU token will be upgraded into PNT later this month so that it can be used, staked and earn interest with the new P-Network ecosystem, the decentralized network powering the P-Token solutions. All right, so IDU's partnered up with them. What else can we find? KingSwap DeFi project sees USD four million in transaction transaction volume in the first three days on Uniswap. So it looks like we've uh, lost some of that. Uh, but basically, you can find uh, PSwap on Uniswap. And if we go over to here, uh, sorry, we go over here and we look into their markets, we can see down here PNT to ETH. So there's a market for it right there. So it's on Uniswap. It's available. That, that's good. It means they're trading and all the rest of it. But again, it's the low market cap that really sort of interests me at the moment. You know, 10 million. And again, if you have a look on uh, coin market cap, it actually says it's 8 million. So under 10 million. The upside for this uh, is big, but the risk is also big. So they're, they're what you need to remember. Don't go dumping your life savings into this, please. That would be silly. But if you've got a couple of spare dollars that you're willing to, you know, I don't want to say gamble, take a punt on. That was the f term I was going to use. And I guess it is kind of sort of gambling, but not like the casino gambling, you know, depending on how you look at it. And I don't recommend gambling. I'm not a gambler myself. But look, I did have a few dollars. Uh, I heard other people talking about it. They've been on Twitter. They've been trending. Uh, BitBoy mentioned them a long, long time ago. Uh, that wasn't what got me onto it. Uh, but I just remember him talking about it. So look, it's out there again, low cap. I thought I'll put a few dollars into it. You know, this doesn't have to move by a whole lot. Uh, and you know, again, it's sitting at 406. Uh, it wouldn't take a whole lot of money to go into this to really pump the price up. So yeah, something I'm looking at. All right. Well, that's kind of it for me. Just a very quick look at P network. Uh, a low kappa that you know the upside uh, could be large uh, if it were to kind of take off but the risk is large as well so don't go diving in uh, with your life savings if you've got a couple of dollars do some research uh, have a look at you know other people that have been talking about it whether it's tr trending on Twitter and again whether it's being used uh, and things like that Again, circulating supply, max supply, and all the rest of it, trading volume. Uh, you know, it is being traded, so they got three million in trading volume in 24 hours. It's not high, but again, it's a low kappa. So, you know, the chances in a bull market of it, you know, moving upwards, you know, I don't want to say a great, but the upside potential uh, is definitely there. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.